This video covers PowerSDR K99S version 2.8.0.52 and uh, what I've added was uh, first I added this combo meter over here. <clears throat> uh, you don't need to select this you can have other things like the live mic hello one two but uh, you can flip it over to the combo meter and then it'll read power SWR ALC and mic obviously the mic is live everything else comes out when you're transmitting uh, next thing I've added over here if you click the space weather a second time if there's room on the screen it'll activate local weather the weather's based on the spotting map uh, latitude longitude assume this is where your antenna is located so if you're operating remotely <clears throat> the weather you'd be seeing here is is the antenna weather uh, wind speed and direction so on and if so if you you, know, you can click it on over here you can click it off so anyway that but uh, the rest of the video I want to talk about uh, running digital modes uh, Obviously, digital mode you want to be in this uh, digital operation over here. And uh, probably one of the first things you're going to want to do is download and install VSP Manager by K5FR. And then create a whole bunch of virtual pairs. You can see I've got some real COM ports here. Uh, these are actual USB to serial port converters that are just plugged into USB ports on my computer. I use one for my Power Master. I use one for my Easy Rotor uh, antenna pointing. Uh, so those are the actual physical ports versus all these are just COM ports that are always one number apart, an odd even, odd even number. Just a whole bunch of them starting with COM 2, 3, COM 4, 5. <clears throat> and then you can see one half of the COM port <clears throat> Uh, will connect to one program, the other half will connect to another program, and in this case one half of all these COM ports connects to DDUtil. So after I'm done creating all these different COM ports and you kind of write down the COM pairs so you can keep track of them all, then I download uh, DDUtil, which is this program here, and you hit setup, open uh, setup form, and you'll get this screen. <clears throat> and because we're running Power SDR, we use Legacy. And what I do is I go into Setup on Power SDR, and I enable the cat, <clears throat> and I enable it on one half of one of those COM port virtual pairs. In this case, it's uh, COM port two. And <clears throat> then the where is my Open that back up again. <clears throat> oh, where did it, it disappear on me? Right here. Okay, so I've got uh, COM port 2 and 3 here. I assign 2 to Power SDR. I assign 3 to here. And then I have an interval of when it's going to update uh, whenever it sends a cat command uh, or a request. In this case, like for frequency data to, to find out what frequency Power SDR is actually running. Uh, I I set it to a thousand uh, milliseconds, so it's it's uh, one update per second. And and then what I do is you go into the ports folder, and all these other ones here, the other uh, one half of all of them go on this list here. So uh, I've got a six and a seven, so I put the six over here. I'm putting all the evens in this list here. <clears throat> and and then you just you don't close out DDU till you just leave it minimized. You don't need to have VSP manager running. You can you know you can get rid of that. But you activate this uh, cat port here, and then you can run programs uh, that need the cat, like uh, WSJT right here WSJTX and I'm running uh, a FT8 mode and you can open up settings and radio and sometimes you can find uh, the PC programs that have power SDR as a setting for a rig in this case uh, I'm using a Kenwood TS2000 because in the power SDR setup uh, there's a allow Kenwood commands for 
for programs that don't fully support Power SDR, they'll support the Kenwood command. So I'm using uh, serial port COM13 for this uh, WSJT because I've got other COM pairs set up for uh, Ham Radio Deluxe, FL Digi, and I want to be able to have all those programs open simultaneously and not have any conflicts. So that's why you need a whole bunch of COM port pairs so that uh, each PC program can have one uh, COM port pair to itself. So if you look on the list, 13, uh, 13 and uh, 12 is assigned to DDUtil, so 13 is assigned to WSJT. And if I hit refresh, it'll show you that uh, WSJTX is now assigned to COM port 13. So uh, the other thing now I need is the virtual the virtual audio. And in Flex, you've got your virtual audio tabs here. You can right-click and open them up. I like to use Windows Direct Sound, but I also I like to use uh, the virtual audio cable. And uh, what you want to do is you got to you know that's a program that you gotta you gotta buy. There are some free ones. The VB cable is another one. But here's virtual audio cables control panel. I don't need the second cable. I just you just need this first one here, number one. And these are the settings for that. And you don't. You don't need to leave it running. It just runs in the background, but it gives you this line one virtual audio cable in and out. And then I set up a sample rate, the buffer size, uh, latency. You can drop that down a little bit if you want. And then um, when you're ready, you enable that. And then when you've got this WSJT open and this open, you'll start to see the signals appearing because now I've got the virtual audio cable uh, because I, in WSJT in the settings for audio I assign the input as line one input and output. You can use the default settings uh, but sometimes that can make a real mess like you could use the uh, uh, the speaker uh, instead of line, instead of a virtual audio cable, you could use your speaker and your microphone and, and so forth. But that can make quite a, a quite a mess. So you really want to stick with the virtual audio cable, unless the program is so old that it doesn't support any other kind of method. And uh, then sometimes you may need to open up in your system tray on your computer. <clears throat> you may need to open up your recording and playback and then set defaults uh, the only certain PC programs they, you know they want to see a default because they don't really have a way to set a device for input and output though that's some really old PC programs that really don't have a way to set it you might have to come in here and and actually select uh, you might have to select line one being a default device in this case I don't need to do that but uh, the other thing like with WSJT is timing you see these lines here these lines they need to end before the end of this transmission here uh, I've taken care of that you can go into the spotting window here and hit the time sync and it'll resync your uh, resync your PC's time clock as long as you launched power SDR in it in admin mode That'll resync your uh, PC and then just hit the start and stop on Power SDR. And then um, as this does the decoding every 15 seconds, this down here is showing you where it's at in the decode or in the monitoring, and then it'll do a decode right after it's done with the 15 seconds. And then these stations will start to appear. And because I'm hooked up with the cat port uh, it's showing you the frequency I'm on sometimes some programs will let you actually set the mode that you want to set uh, I'm using the 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 digi U mode and then if I choose to I can make I can try to make contact if I click this will key the radio <clears throat> you can configure this to use the cat command to actually key the radio so now I'm getting all this coming in through uh, through the virtual audio cable.
and it's showing me what I'm seeing here. And then the last step, the other thing I do is in I go into memory and I put all the FT8 frequencies on all the different bands in memory by going around and finding where the FT8 are on the band, select my mode, and make sure power stars in focus, and then hitting the alternate key and the letter M as in Mary, alternate M, and then that adds adds new memory channels uh, on the screen. And now I can go to the scanner, and then I can type in FT8 down here, and I'll have my list here, and then this makes it easy for me to go around I can either run the scanner and let it scan around, but I can go around and I can check, okay, 80 meters, I, I'm seeing FT8 activity. Of course, 40 meters FT8 activity. There's 30 meters. I don't really have an antenna for that, but I, but uh, that's another way um, to make it faster to check uh, if the band is active. And that's it.